Hello, my name is Alan Ali. I'm a research fellow in the Center of Cancer Research at Queen's University, Belfast. And today I want to share with you some of the results that we recently got. We are currently working on a project that involves repurposing FDA approved drugs for the treatment of COVID-19. We all know that SARS-CoV-2 is a respiratory disease that can cause extensive damage to the lungs as a result of the inflammatory responses. And as we see here from the figure on the right side, taken from a paper that was done on 10 victims of the disease that the SARS-CoV-2 virus can be distributed through the whole body, but inflammation is only restricted to the respiratory area. So for an ideal therapeutic intervention will be getting rid of the virus using antiviral drugs such as remdesivir that's currently used in hospitals and also managing inflammation using anti-inflammatory drugs such as dexamethasone. So this brings us to the aim of the project, which is screening for drugs for antiviral and anti-inflammatory activities against SARS-CoV-2. In this project, we are using drug repurposing approach. Drug repurposing involves investigation of existing drugs for new therapeutic purposes. Why drug repurposing? And the fact that those drugs are already used in humans. Uh, we know the safety profiles of those drugs, so the route uh, to the market will be faster and it will be cheaper compared to developing uh, a drug from scratch. In our project, we use three different libraries. We use an FDA approved library, uh, a customized library that contains uh, drugs based on virtual screening on different sites of the virus, and we also use an antiviral library. So we got the virus, we grew it, we confirmed its identity as shown here in, in the Western blot. So we're working on the strain that we got from the PHE, the Public Health England, and it happened to be the sample uh, that was taken from the first SARS-CoV-2 patient in the UK. However, for all our validation studies, we are testing all uh, other strains, uh, including some of the local strains that we got here from Belfast. So first of all, we want to screen a panel of cell lines to determine the optimal cell line for our drug screen. As you can see here from the graph and from the images that some uh, cell lines infect very well, while others have low to no, no level of infection. This was done using plaque assay and also confirmed using immunofluorescent staining. Our methodology uh, of the screening was spotting drugs on the plates first. So we used 384 well plates. We spotted the drugs at a concentration of five micromolar. That's followed by seeding the cells at the top and then incubating for 24 hours before adding the virus. So the virus would add, was added at an MOI of 0.1 and then three day after we were measuring the cytopathic effect uh, using the Claro Plus Star plate treated. So the methodology looks straightforward. However, it took us a good two to three months to optimize all the conditions for the screen, starting from what's the best cell light to use, what's the best positive control, what strain do we start with? What's the best MOI to use? And the volume of injection as well. We know that those wells are very small and they don't hold much of a volume. So the volume of the virus that was added to the drugs, that was something that we had to consider. And finally, the assay readout, we had to optimize a panel of toxicity assays, uh, such as cell uh, titer glow, cell toxic green from Promigam. And we end up, end up using cell toxigreen because that's the one that was giving us more of a consistent results. So having all this optimized, we're moving now to the results section. So those are the results from our first uh, screen. Um, so the data here is normalized to the vehicle control. And we selected candidate drugs that conveyed at least 90% protection from the SARS-CoV-2. 
And if you see here, it was quite reassuring that uh, some of the hits that we got here were previously reported by the others. So this is kind of a validation for our approach. So we take the potential hits from this uh, large screen and then we went further and we validate them. We did a full dose uh, uh, curve and from all the drugs that we uh, validated, only one drug came up. Uh, I'm naming it drug A for the moment. So this drug showed impressive blocking in both uh, cell lines and its activity was comparable to the protective ability of remdesivir that's currently the standard care in the clinic. So we took this drug forward and we started validating this drug. So we assessed its ability to prevent a viral mRNA expression. We used two doses. We used the 5 maker molar and we used the higher dose. So first of all, we had to check the toxicity of this uh, higher uh, dose of drug A and it didn't have any apparent toxicity on the cells. And then we went also and we assessed uh, the ability of the a uh, um, to prevent mature viral production from infected cells at different concentrations and it's clearly showing here that drug a whenever it's used at 25 micromolar it had equivalent antiviral activity against stars cov2 compared to remdesivir at one micromolar so then we thought if this drug will ever make it to the clinic, it's going to be used as a part of other combination treatments. So we combined drug A and remdesivir to see if there is any uh, additive synergism effect. So that's a full dose response care here of each of the drugs alone and the combination of remdesivir plus drug A. And we clearly demonstrated here that there is a synergistic effect between the two drugs to inhabit SARS-CoV-2 production. So the final study that we're currently working on is kind of a therapeutic study. So all the other studies were prophylactic where we get, we treat with the drug before we infect, but then we were thinking if this is going to go to the clinic, it will be giving to patients who are already infected with the virus. So we did a therapeutic study where we infect first and then we give the drug. So this was done using a more representative model for humans. So we use primary differentiated nasal epithelial cells. And you see here on the right side, we started to validate those allele cultures and uh, see if we can infect them with SARS-CoV-2. So it's clearly here that they are infectable. Following that, we tested uh, three donors uh, with this approach and uh, it's very clear here that two out of three donors responded uh, to the drug. Um, now we are in the process of getting more donors and uh, validating uh, this experiment as well. But for summary, we can say that drug A has a potent antiviral activity in vitro. We are now in the process of patenting the drug and setting up clinical trials. Um, what I was uh, mentioning here in this presentation is one aspect of the project. We also are testing potential combinations of the drugs. We saw that a lot of drugs gave 50% protection against the virus, so we thought maybe combining those, those two drugs will uh, give us a better response. And as I said at the beginning of the presentation, an ideal intervention would be giving the antiviral and the anti-inflammatory drugs. So we are working also on this aspect of uh, the project. Uh, so this project was a collaboration between the Center of Cancer Research and the virology team in Queen's University, Belfast. So I would like to uh, thank all uh, the, co the collaborators, especially Ken Mills and Alton Power, and all the virology team that was involved in the study. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.